the 2022 winter commencement exercises for George Mason University have now begun. Please stand for the presentation of colors and the singing of the national anthem. So proudly we hail at the twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Good morning. Good morning. Please be seated. Before we begin, I would like to thank our vocalist, Rosemary White, for singing the national anthem. That was outstanding, Rosemary. She is graduating from the College of Visual and Performing Arts, majoring in vocal performance in the Dewberry School of Music. Rosemary will join us later for the singing of our national anthem. So I would also like to thank Dr. Michael Nickens and Mason's very own Green Machine for the musical entertainment for the musical entertainment they provided this morning. Thank you, Doc Nix. Well, welcome fellow patriots, families, friends, and distinguished guests as we congratulate our 2022 graduates. In our ceremony today, we will award more than 4,700 bachelor's, master's, doctoral, and law degrees, as well as nearly 400 certificates. These outstanding students come from 63 countries, 44 states, and a multitude of ethnic, religious, gender, and cultural backgrounds. They are representative of the largest, most diverse, and most innovative public research university in the state of Virginia.
These graduates have the distinction of earning their degrees in the same year as Mason's 50th anniversary as an independent university. And that, what, and, 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 and what a 50th it has been. It's been a great year with major developments on all four of our individual campuses. Here in Fairfax, we unveiled our enslaved people of George Mason Memorial. We welcomed our largest and most diverse freshman class. And we established the first College of Public Health in Virginia. At Mason Square, formerly our Arlington campus, we launched FUSE, a tech hub that connects students, faculty, industry, and government. And we also hold, hosted our first anti-racism and inclusive excellence national conference. <laughs> On our science and technology campus in Manassas, <clears throat> we broke ground on a new life sciences and engineering building, as well as, an, as well as the Innovation Town Center and the University Village at Innovation Projects. And at Mason Korea, we established the Industrial University Collaboration Foundation. Of course, our greatest achievements are right here in the room, and they're the student success stories you see before you today. More than one in four of the patriots we are honoring today is a first-generation graduate or the first in their family to earn a four-year degree. Would those graduates please stand so we can celebrate the family history you are making? <laughs> Simply outstanding, outstanding. Mason's partnership with Northern Virginia Community College, including the ADVANCE program, is one of the most successful in all of America. Would our 2022 graduates who attended a community college please stand? We're so proud of all of our graduates and we know that each of you had strong support along the way. Let's take a moment to thank graduates. Let's take a moment to thank the people who have accompanied you on your way. The moms, the dads, the guardians, the siblings, the spouses, the children, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the spiritual leaders, the coaches, the pizza delivery guys. Give them all a round of applause. Graduates, you could not have anticipated the challenges that would arise during your time here. None of us could. The world that existed when you entered Mason is not the same world you enter as college graduates. In fact, this is the first class to graduate in what we consider the endemic phase of the pandemic. To make sure you're on a successful path, I wanted to take some time and a few moments to offer you my top five pieces of advice for graduates entering this new normal. In the new normal, masks are a fashion statement. And not only that, they protect us and they comfort us. And if you had too much garlic during lunch, they can help with that too. <laughs> but please, if you wear a mask into a bank, make sure that it only covers your nose and mouth. The phrases you just can't use until further notice, it is too soon to use a phrase like, avoid him like the plague. Too soon. <laughs> In the new normal, we can be grateful. Appreciate the aromas of your childhood. You remember that? Things like a fresh box of crayons, bacon frying in the kitchen, your grandmother's perfume. Today, though, there are a bunch of six-year-olds running around whose childhood reeks of Purell. So appreciate that. In the new normal, 
our work environment has changed. Everybody now works from home. You know, I saw a burglar kick down his own door, said he was working from home. <laughs> but in this new normal, do not get too comfortable. Never go into a clothing store and ask where the work slippers department is. There is no work slippers department, at least not yet. And in the new normal, you'll have to challenge your beliefs. You think your spouse really wants you to work from home? I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but even your cat is not as thrilled to have you at home as you think they are. I hope this all helps, but our challenge, your next challenge as you graduate, is just beginning. Why? Because your post-pandemic reality includes all the challenges created and exacerbated by COVID. Rising economic and education equality, increasing costs for goods and services, rampant mental health issues, civic unrest, challenges to our democratic product, a process, marginalized ethnic and religious minorities. The vision and ambitions of the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals are now more important than ever and will be even harder to achieve because of the impact of this pandemic. So as you emerge today, perhaps you will emerge as a different kind of graduate than you anticipated. However, I contend that you leave here more prepared than any class before you to tackle and solve the great challenges we face. And why do I say that? For several reasons. Number one, you've earned a degree from one of the top research universities in the country with thought leaders who are tackling grand challenges related to climate change and cybersecurity and public health and social justice, to name a few. Number two, you've earned a degree from a university whose campus already looks like what America will soon look like with no ethnic majority. You're accustomed to working across cultures and across diversity of origin, identity, circumstance, and thought. This allows you to see the world more completely, to think more creatively, and examine full truths. It's all part of what makes, of what makes George Mason University all together different. Number three, you've not only adapted to change, you're leading by generating change, handling the challenges of the pandemic, handling the challenges the pandemic has thrown at you, and finding new ways to get things done. And if you don't believe that, let me highlight just a few of the class of 2022 leaders and innovators and change makers we are so proud to honor today. We have a 73-year-old earning a master's degree in art history. Give her a round of applause. And while she enriched herself, she enriched her colleagues. She earned an Art History Graduate Student Leadership Award for serving as a teaching assistant, secretary for the Art History Graduate Association, and as representative for the Graduate and Professional Students Organization. She indeed lifted others by following her passion and what an example for the power of lifelong learning. We have an electrical engineering uh, uh, major who, as a sophomore, joined forces with a classmate to start a student club called the Innovate Invention and Innovators Team in one of our maker spaces. He wanted to build, as he says, whatever it takes. He wanted individuals to be able to build whatever it is that tickles their mind. Current projects include a fire detecting drone and a sensing cane for the visually impaired. We have a bioengineering PhD candidate who has developed an injectable dye that attaches the tumor cells and increases the contrast of those cells against background tissue. Through photoacoustic imaging, this could enable cancer to be visualized in early stages and in deep tissue. With her help, with help from her faculty mentors at Mason, she hopes to turn her technology into a successful company. 
and we have a student. Right, you give a round of applause. We have a student earning her Master's of Health Administration in Health Systems Management. Her data analysis of the Surprise Billing Act is being attached to a report to Congress, and she also wrote part of that actual report. These are terrific examples of the audacity that defines so many Mason students and the opportunities available to them at this university. These are the type of impressive graduates we produce here at George Mason University. And that is a testament to the students themselves, the communities of support, and to our Mason faculty and staff members who do a tremendous job of educating, inspiring, and serving our students. Will members of our faculty and staff please stand so we can thank you for the role you've played in the lives of our graduates. I would also like to thank I would also like to thank members of our president's council who could join us today. These are the key leaders who guide our campus on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you for all of your guidance and support. Please stand and be recognized. I'd also like to acknowledge our Alumni Association for its work to maintain a lifelong bond with more than 220,000 graduates. Big deal. Please give them a round of applause. Look, graduates, when you leave here today, Mason will come with you. Your Mason journey will last a lifetime because what you've learned and experienced here and the relationships you've developed will serve you for a lifetime. You are now part of an enormous network of careers and recruitment opportunities. You are welcome back to campus anytime to speak, to serve, to work, and to attend events. You are forever part of Mason's history and success, and we, could, we will continue to celebrate with you. Do not forget us. We will not forget you. And finally, I'd like to recognize our governing body, the Board of Visitors, for the tremendous job they do in guiding this innovative university. We have the largest group of Board of Visitors at a Mason graduation with us here today. With those members of the Board of Visitors, please stand and so you can be recognized. It is now my pleasure to introduce the rector of the George Mason University Board of Visitors, Horace Blackman, to introduce the commencement speaker. Good morning, and thank you, Dr. Washington. Our guest here today, Dr. Gregory W. Fowler, is a 1995 graduate of George Mason University, and he is the seventh president of the largest online public university in the United States. The University of Maryland Global Campus, which serves some 90,000 students annually, both online and on site in more than 20 countries and territories. A national a recognized scholar and leader uh, in developing innovative learning modules for adult and non traditional student population, Dr. Fowler served uh, on the leadership team that built what is now two of the largest and fastest growing universities in America Western Governors University and Southern New Hampshire University, both of which serve non-traditional students in non-traditional ways. Dr. Fowler is a graduate of Morehouse College in his native Georgia and a Charles A. Dana Scholar at Duke University. He's also a two-time Fulbright, a senior Fulbright Scholar to Germany and Belgium. He holds a PhD in English and American Studies from the State University of New York at Buffalo, an MBA from Western Governors University, along with an MA in English from our very own George Mason University. Please join me in a warm welcome for the 2022 recipient of our College of Humans, Humanities and Social Sciences Distinguished Alumni Award in English and the president of the University of Maryland Global Campus, Dr. Gregory W. Fowler.
Now, by the, the authority vested in me by the Board of Visitors of George Mason University, I hereby confer upon Gregory Fowler the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights and privileges thereunto and belonging. It is my honor to present you with the George Mason University 2022 commencement speaker, Dr. Gregory Fowler. Thank you, Dr. Washington, and to you, graduates, and my soon-to-be fellow alumni, let me join with all who are wishing you congratulations. I sit through enough of these ceremonies to know that my presence and the words that I share will be most appreciated if I keep my remarks brief and relevant. <laughs> See? <laughs> so I ask myself, what are a few things that I might have wanted someone to say to me when I was sitting where you are now, what's almost 30 years ago? First of all, I can't believe that almost 30 years have passed. You will hear over and over again in your life that time flies. That time is precious, and still I wish that more and more people would have reminded me of that fundamental truth that time is a limited resource. You can't buy or borrow one second more of it. So I want you to dare to do the things that scare you and never miss an opportunity to hear someone else's story. Time and time again in my life, seemingly random conversations have led to life-altering opportunities or memorable achievements including one such moment when I was walking across campus at Morehouse College and said hello to a woman sitting on a bench, just hello. But by the time that conversation had ended, I'd been invited to apply for a job here in Washington, D.C. and moved here eight weeks later. Which leads to my second point, reaching that point in your maturity where you truly see your friends, your parents, your bosses, and even your heroes as fellow human beings who are also on their own journeys to discovery as well. Many of you will struggle with, struggle, with the over, and struggle with and have to overcome what we call imposter syndrome, that nagging sense or expectation that everybody else has already figured something out, coupled with that fleeting hope that at some point in the future, you will figure it out as well, no longer burdened by fear or uncertainty. First of all, I'm here to tell you that's not true. The things you see others around you doing, their accomplishments and achievements, may require effort and sacrifice, but they are well within your reach as well. Don't wait for your fear or your anxieties to go away. Courage is not the absence of fear. It is the ability to persevere in the presence of fear. And while it is true that the people around you are no better than you, keep in mind as well that neither are they less than you, though they may experience the world through different lenses. One of my heroes is Martin Luther King Jr., whom many of you will associate with his I Have a Dream speech, or perhaps the one he gave the night before he was assassinated, entitled, I've Been to the Mountaintop. For me, however, King's greatest speech is one he gave exactly two months before his death, entitled, The Drum Major Instinct. In that speech, King explained instinct, the drum major instinct, as our innate desire for recognition, for attention, for distinction, and notes that while it is neither inherently good or bad, all too often it can drive us to try to lift ourselves up by putting other people down. Education, at its best, does not lead to arrogance, but rather to humility, because we learn how little we truly know and how little we ever will, in fact, know. The greatest among us are those who remember always that no matter how learned we become or how deeply experienced we are, we still only see a small piece of the whole, and there is always the chance, indeed the likelihood, that we could be wrong. To be educated is to recognize also how dependent we are on others. I recently read that shortly before his death, Steve Jobs wrote a memo to himself, 
in which he noted that he didn't write the music that inspired him, didn't make the medicines that helped treat his illness, didn't weave the clothes that he wore, and didn't grow the food that he ate. I would add that for many of the things he talked about, he almost certainly didn't know the creator's politics, gender or gender identity, sexual orientation, race, or any of the other things that so often currently divide us. To be educated then means valuing diversity of thought and recognizing how important to human progress are those who are different from ourselves. I often wonder at the irony and the hypocrisy underlying the fact that our movies, our histories, they celebrate the ones who are different, who go against the grain, who challenge the status quo. But while you do in reality do the opposite, we do everything in our power to make those around us conform or assimilate. Today, you've honored me with a doctor of humane letters. When I was completing my master's degree here at George Mason, I was also working at the National Endowment for the Humanities as an outreach specialist and then later in media relations. And from time to time, I'm asked about the humanities, what they are and why they are so significant and how someone with a degree in the humanities ended up helping to build some of the largest universities in the country. At the core, the humanities are about what it means to be human, the artifacts that we produce and our relationship to them, whether looking at ways of thinking, the, creative, the creation of narratives, or the evolution of cultures. Ultimately, the humanities place a mirror in front of us, forcing us to acknowledge both our achievements and our failures. Shortly after I left George Mason University, I took a job as an instructor. And in one of my freshman classes, I often used the Time Magazine article about the Russian sailors who ultimately died in the Kursk submarine accident in 2000. An explosion near the bow disabled and sank the vessel, killing many of the crew and trapping the remainder in compartments near the stern. The article noted that when salvage crews were finally able to raise the submarine more than a year later, they discovered that the sailors had written goodbye letters in the dark while their vessel rested on the ocean floor more than 300 feet below the surface. They, the sailors, knew, of course, that they were almost certain to die. And they also knew that given the depths, it was unlikely that their bodies would ever be recovered. So why, the article asked, do we, as humans, write even when there is little chance that it will ever be seen? And the answer is because it is a record that we have been here, that we existed, that we matter. And so my final point to you is just that. This is your time. You matter. Make your mark on the world and do all you can to empower others to make their mark on the world as well. I am no fan of placing restrictions on expressions or actions as long as we do our best to never hinder someone else's journey in life, even as we carve out our own paths to discovery. Many of my most cherished and important moments sprang from interactions with others whose views and experiences of the world were almost unrecognizably different from my own. I am better for it. You will be too. In your life, you will have critics. Do not let them make you cynical. You will have failures. Learn from them so that tomorrow will be better than today. And of course, you will have moments like these, surrounded by those you love and basking in the glow of accomplishment. Let them sustain you as you pave the way for those who come behind you. We are rooting for you. All of us are, especially the two presidents named Greg sitting here on the stage today. So thank you again, George Mason University, for this honor. And congratulations again to you, students. Go forth. Do great things. I bid you Godspeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President Fowler. Very inspiring remarks. Well, good morning. I'm Mark Ginsburg, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as provost of George Mason University. George Mason University has a tradition of having a graduating senior address their fellow students at commencement. Well, this morning, we are very pleased to continue that tradition by introducing today's student speaker, Yasmin Imani Alamin.
Let me just tell you a little bit about Yasmeen. She is graduating today with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. And while attending NOVA, the Northern Virginia Community College, she was selected as a NASA Community College Aerospace Scholar. Well, that led to two semesters of internship work at the Goddard Space Flight Center, world-renowned. Yasmin has many interests, and she is nationally competitive, one of her many interests, nationally competitive as a first-degree black belt. That's not enough. Ranked number one in the country in her weight class in judo. Now, that's impressive. That's really impressive. But she's also an artist. She's an acrylic landscape painter. She has many interests, as do many of our students. She has a position lined up as a liquefied natural gas facility design engineer at the United States Department of Transportation. But she also aspires, she aspires one day to run her own engineering consulting firm. Please join me in welcoming Yasmin Amani Alamin, our student speaker today. I didn't have a first day of school, or a second, or a third. In fall of 2018, when I was supposed to start Mason, I was on the other side of the Atlantic, in Kumasi, Ghana, doing my registration on questionable hotel lobby Wi-Fi. After graduating from NOVA, my plans to continue engineering in West Africa had tanked, and I found myself on a plane back to DC a lot sooner than I anticipated. By the time I landed home, I'd been awake for 30 hours, I had already missed my first class, changed out of my sweats in what I now know is the bathroom of the Fine Arts Building, before getting lost twice on my way to my second class. My interesting first day at Mason, which should have been my fourth, <laughs> foreshadowed some of the many challenges I would face to graduating along my way to graduating with you all. I'll be sharing four stories and four lessons from my time in university. We all know the collegiate experience is so much more than just taking classes. It's a nighting of sorts that takes us through the dark trenches of studying way too late and the fires of pulling all the weight on our group projects. It also teaches us that cup of noodles won't cut it, laundry is not free, and we should never take for granted having our moms cook for us on a regular basis. <laughs> By the end of my first semester, I had failed to find a job, and in mid-December, I found myself driving freezing cold in my family's minivan, because I didn't have my own car, to take my first 7 a.m. exam. I arrived valiantly at 6.35 a.m., and then decided to wait in my car for 10 minutes before heading in. Having studied deep into the night, I then fell asleep in my warm car, waking up precisely at 7. I sprinted across campus to arrive outside my classroom a nice 15 minutes late. I swallowed my disbelief, took a few aggressive inhales, rummaged through my backpack to get everything that I would need before slowly opening the door. Ultimately, I did fine on the exam. This was the first lesson. We must learn to detach ourselves from previous disaster so we can succeed at the task at hand. The ability to shake off anxiety about one thing to succeed at the next, that is the mark of a champion. <laughs> the following semester, I had no money. Perhaps that's familiar to some of you. I was paying my own way through school, and my family is full of ambitious people who emphasize education, so expectations on me felt high. I could only afford to take three credits that semester, so my financial aid became zero. I did manage to land a job at Home Depot, which is a far cry from interning at NASA as I had done two semesters the previous year. That felt like an enormous step backwards to me. Still, a year went by of me cashiering at Home Depot in lumber and garden. I learned a lot about the construction side of engineering, 
saved up for my sophomore classes, and even received some Home Depot financial aid. That was the second lesson. We must always be humble and flexible in our approach to success. We have to remain open-minded about getting the most out of wherever we end up and never be too good to be a part of something. <laughs> By the end of 2019, I had landed the dream internship at the US Department of Transportation. That's a position that guarantees employment upon successful graduation. Things were finally looking good. Pandemic. <laughs> Spring turned to summer, turned to fall of 2020, and six weeks into that fall, I found myself having failed the first fluid dynamics exam that I was handed. I had to get honest with myself and do something different, or I was not going to become a mechanical engineer. I had no time and no money to retake my classes. So I studied harder, devoured the textbook, and completely gave up watching TV. By the time it hit December that semester, I might have been the only Mason student who didn't realize the new Star Wars movie was already out. <laughs> this was the third lesson. We must always take sincere responsibility for what we want to achieve. We will have amazing coaches and teachers and professors and family, but none of that replaces the individual commitment on each of us to find a way to our success. Only then can we effectively leverage what is around us to bring our dreams to life. So, fall 2021, senior year. We had real school again, real school with real people who I didn't think I missed because I'm such an introverted individual. We had real school with masks that made my glasses fog up so I couldn't always see, but it was real school. And I even finally had my own car. I then became a team lead on the mechanical engineering department's most elaborate senior project. And much like my first week at Mason, when I tell you everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, I'm not kidding. From getting roasted by professors, to having to stay up for 20 hours straight to finish papers with my team, to having to pull a team member off the project for not pulling their weight, to mutinies, to having to skip all of winter and spring break to get the job done. It was all in there. But our work paid off, and the fourth lesson presented itself. Struggle means you are on the path to victory, and the struggle will always be proportional to what you are trying to achieve. <laughs> big wins require big battles, and though it hurts at the time, be confident that if you are sincere in your efforts, the hard days mean you're on the right track. If everything is easy, that is when you should be concerned. So, that's four lessons from my time at Mason. These beyond the classroom lessons and others like them are a reflection of all the stunning graduates that we have in this room. I'm confident that you all have had to rise through some equally challenging occasions in order to make it to today. Persevering through undergrad, masters, and PhD programs breathes a special kind of toughness into us and builds in, makes us into the human beings capable of attacking our greatest ambition. That is exactly who we, the class of 2022, have become. So I will say a sincere congratulations to all of you, and I hope you all go forth fearlessly and confidently, knowing that nothing will be able to stop you, even if your first day of school should have been your fourth. Thank you. so much. Great.
Thank you, Yasmin. On behalf of all of us on the platform party and all of you in the audience, congratulations. <laughs> the George Mason University Alumni Association is your lifelong connection to Mason. And upon graduation, you become an alum, but you also become a member, a member of the Mason Alumni Association, which is a community of more than 220,000 patriots around the globe. Now that you're on the cusp of being graduates, please welcome to the podium your fellow graduate and fellow Mason alum, Christine Landau, graduating in 1989 with a bachelor's degree and in 1992 with a master's degree. She serves as the president of the George Mason University Alumni Association, and I'm pleased that she will welcome you into membership in that fine body. Christine. All right, hello Mason Nation. I am very happy to um, welcome you, uh, the 2022 class, to the George Mason University Alumni Association. And as Professor um, and Provost has indicated, 220,000 members worldwide. You've reached this major milestone with the help of your family, your friends, your professors, your counselors, and many others. Now you have the power of this new family that have walked in your shoes. Mine was there 32 years ago, sitting in your seat. And the power that this university has to have transformed my life, I'm excited as I look to what you will accomplish. 220,000 means there is likely an alum in any industry you are joining. There is likely an alum in any location that you are settling in. This is an incredible network that you can leverage and you should leverage it, so take advantage of that. I'm gonna go a little off script and say, I would love to see from all of our family and friends who are gathered, stand up if you are a Mason alumni. So, or if you can't stand up, wave so that our alumni here on the floor, new alumni, can see who you are. So if anybody could stand up. Thank you. So please take your Patriot Pride with you wherever you go, enthusiastically telling your Mason story to anyone who will listen. And as you meet fellow alumni along the journey, you will see that we are a community here to help each other along the way. Speaking of help, it is important to remember there are many ways to engage as a Mason alumni, so make sure you stay engaged. You can be a guest speaker in a class. You could come back and mentor both your fellow alumni and the students who are coming behind you. You can come back for events. Homecoming is coming up in February, so make sure you come back to celebrate. And yes, we would love if you gave. Um, philanthropy is critical. You can find out about all these avenues by visiting the Alumni Association website at alumni.gmu.edu to stay connected. And if you need any help, please reach out to me. I will get you connected. I'm a professor here at George Mason in addition to the Alumni Association president, and our alumni are what make this university what it is. So alumni are the greatest asset that we have. It is through your dedication and accomplishment that we can serve and sustain this fantastic university and contribute to the broader world. You give us a unique purpose and we need to hear your voice, so thank you. As the President of the Alumni Association, congratulations, Class of 2022. I wish you continued success as you strive for the pursuit of your best self. You don't need to compete with anybody else, just be your best self and bring that back here to Mason. And remember, once a patriot, always a patriot. So go Mason and go out, be kind, and do amazing things. Thank you very much. President Washington, as provost, I have the honor to present candidates for doctoral degrees, the highest degree in course. Will the candidates for degrees of doctors of arts 
and Doctor of Philosophy, please rise and remain standing. I confer on you the, the, the doctoral degree for which you stand. I bestow upon you all the <laughs> rights and privileges belonging to that degree, and I welcome you into the company of scholars. I now call upon the new doctors to come forward to the platform for the presentation of their diplomas by the president. Vice President for, or Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, my colleague, Dr. Jeanette Muir, will announce the candidates by field of study. We ask the audience to please hold your applause until all of the candidates have been announced. As the candidates proceed to the stage, I'm very pleased to extend to you my personal congratulations. Doctoral education indeed is challenging. Engaging in studies at the doctoral level is both inspiring, yet also rewarding. You've chosen a path that provides a rampway to great achievements, and also a rampway to consequential impact. You've dived deeply into a field and a topic that you've chosen, not only for your studies, but also for your dissertation project. You needed to work hard, you needed to focus, you've also needed to persevere. You've needed to remain patient, yet also optimistic, even during those moments of frustration when you wondered if you ever would complete that doctoral course of study and dissertation project. It's been said by some that pursuing a doctoral degree is a daring adventure. Well, I can say from experience, indeed, it is. And through it all, you've accomplished what few are able to do, you know, less than 2%. Less than 2% of our nation's population holds a doctoral degree. You're prepared, prepared to pursue knowledge by asking questions and researching answers to our most vexing, complex, and important problems that we face today in our society and that we'll face in the future. As you enter what is often called the community of scholars, that attaining a doctoral degree infers you are poised to have an impact and you're poised to engage in the work of your field in important, consequential, and highly impactful ways. I look forward to learning about your, your next daring adventure and I'm confident that you will make a positive, enduring, sustaining, and important difference in your community, in our nation, and indeed the world. We all are inspired by you, pleased for you, and together we celebrate each and every one of you. All of, it, all of us at Mason delight in applauding your achievements. Mr. President, I present new Doctor of Arts whose field of study is musical arts, Abigail Faith Zuniga. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is bioengineering. Shrishta Shrishti Singh. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is bioinformatics and computational biology. Carrie Ann Richards. Shaima Sate. John Sangubuali. Jonathan Shao. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is biosciences. Gifty Mensa. Areyemi Olanrewaju. Ola 
Jessica Roman. Nyok Vyong. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is chemistry and biochemistry. Andrew J. Evangelisti. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is civil and infrastructure engineering. Sandarva Murti Sharma. Puya Golizade. Mr. President, I present new doctor of philosophy whose field of study is climate dynamics. Shi She. Mr. President, I present new doctor of philosophy whose field of study is communication. Rochelle Davidson Monday. <laughs> Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is computational sciences and informatics. Jared Keith Gruy. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> Greg Paul Hembrick, Helmick. <laughs> Joseph Marr. That was Taylor, right? Taylor? Joseph? Joseph Marr. Taylor K. Stevens. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is computer science. Kesina Bural. Panayotis Kajijanis. Kazi Luthful Kabir. Eric Scott. <laughs> Ding Zhang. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is conflict analysis and resolution. Matthew Belli. <laughs> Jihan Abdullah Ghaffer. Bridget? Yes. Bridget. Bridget Moore. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is criminology, law, and society. Sally C. Alexander. <laughs> William Dean Johnson. <laughs> Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is cultural studies. Christina Riley. David Zeglin. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. President, I present new Doctor of Philosophy whose field of study is Earth Systems and Geoinformation Sciences, Ahmed Mohammed Askar. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is economics. Anne K. Blas. Peter Marshall. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is education. Amanda K. Ayers. Lauren Biscardi. Sarah Bogdevich. Jody L. Carr. You Jody? Jody? Is Jody here? Are you Jody? Come on, Jody. Hang on, Jamie. <laughs> this is Jody L. Carr. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Jamie Day. Andrew Hamilton. Samantha T. Ives. Talisa Gentavia Jackson. Unmi Lee Kim. Michelle A. Lagu. Matthew Preble. <laughs> Jeremy Redford. <laughs> Alexandra Selkirk Reed. Julia Renberg. Jane Ann Sherman. Jared L. Stanley. Susanna Williams Taylor. <laughs> Laura L. Tokarczyk. <laughs> Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is electrical and computer engineering. Masikordi Barugeni. Zhang Bang Na. Jafetra Rambelson. Mr. President, I present new Doctor of Philosophy whose field of study is environmental science and public policy, Chase Andrew Ladue. Mr. President, I present new Doctors of Philosophy whose field of study is Health Services Research, Tammy Jones. Lisa McEwen.
Constance Elaine Owens. What? What? Terang is not here. Yeah, I know. Mary Louise Pomeroy. Mr. President, I present a new doctor of philosophy whose field of study is history, Mika Endo. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is information technology. Fernando Bocanayre. What number are you? Which one? 109. Okay. Oluwasun? Yeah. Okay. Oluwasun Opulwa Abdeg Behingbe. Rami Alanafrani. Nicholas Kent Clark. Ibe Fubara Ig Anubo. Song Song Lee. Is Ra Rasak Otunba? Is this yeah. Rasak? Yeah. What's her number? She's 117. I'm 116. Okay. All right. Mr. President, I present new Dr. Philosophy, whose field of study is music education. Anna Marie Severini Bolino. <laughs> Mr. President, I present new Dr. Philosophy, whose field of study is neuroscience. Fara Bader. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is physics. James Bartlett. Robert J. Cooper. You're 121? Yes. Okay. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is political science. Andrew Scott Bledsoe. Matthew Fay. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is psychology. Rachel Barkley. Rebecca Carell. Annie Fox. Sarah Giff. <laughs> Melissa Stixma Hicken. Justin Menson. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is public policy. Katrina Hubbard Dunlap. Anna M. Hartman. Mohammed Salar Khan. Okay, hang on just a second. 142, Marissa? Which issues? Ah, got it. Okay. Mr. President, I present new doctors of philosophy whose field of study is sociology. Ishmael Noradani. Marissa Allison. Mr. President, I present new doctor of philosophy whose field of study is statistical science. Yakun Wang. Mr. President, I present a new doctor of philosophy whose field of study is systems engineering and operations research, Robert Arhus.
Will the recipients of doctoral degrees be seated? And I see you are already. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Mr. President, this completes the awarding of the highest degrees in course. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Muir, for reading all those names, and congratulations to all of the new doctors. Great achievement. Before we begin the conferral of other degrees, I would like to ask the Dean of our Honors College, Dean Sophia Burr, and the Honors College, grad Honors College graduates, that is, to please stand and be recognized for your exceptional effort and for your accomplishments. As an Honors College student, you took on additional academic challenges. That's right. Please stand if you're an Honors College graduate. Many of our Honors College students take on additional leadership roles in student organizations. Two-thirds have participated in community service projects, and three-quarters of you, graduates of our Honors College, that is, have completed internships. Congratulations to you all. We thank you for your many important contributions to the Mason community. The deans of our university will now present the candidates for bachelor's and master's degrees. And President Washington, by the authority vested in him by our Board of Visitors, will, by a traditional formula, confer the degrees. All candidates have been approved by the faculty of the college or school for the degree in which they stand. All degrees, however, are conferred contingent upon certification by the Office of the Registrar that all degree requirements satisfactorily have been completed. Mr. President, I'm pleased to present the College of Humanities and Social Sciences Dean, Dean Ann Artis. Mr. President. Mr. President, try again. <laughs> <laughs> I call now candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. As your major program is called, please rise students and remain standing. Majors in creative writing. Oop, hold on. Second blooper. Start with the A's. Majors in anthropology, in art history, in communication. Majors in creative writing, in criminology, law, and society, in economics, in English. Majors in environmental and sustainability studies, in foreign languages, in global affairs, in history. Majors in human development and family science, in individualized study, in integrative studies. Majors in philosophy, in psychology. In religious studies, in Russian and Eurasian studies, in sociology. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Will the recipients of bachelor's degrees please be seated?
I call now candidates for master's degrees in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing, students. Programs in anthropology, in applied industrial and organizational psychology, in art history, in communication, in creative writing, in criminal justice. Programs in economics, in English, in foreign languages. Programs in global affairs, in higher education and student development, in history, in interdisciplinary studies, in psychology, in sociology. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Chess Master's degree recipients, please be seated and congratulations. President Washington, I'm pleased to call upon the Dean of the College of Science, Fernando Morales Wilhelm. Mr. President, I call now candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Science. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Majors in atmospheric sciences, in biology, in chemistry, in computational and data sciences, in earth science, in environmental science, in forensic science, in geography, in geology, majors in mathematics, in neuroscience, in physics. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Science, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Will the recipients of bachelor's degrees please be seated? I call now candidates for master's degrees in the College of Science. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Programs in applied and engineering physics, in bioinformatics and computational biology, in biology, programs in chemistry, in computational science, programs in earth system science, in environmental science and policy, in forensic science, in geographic and cartographic sciences, in geoinformatics and geospatial intelligence, in mathematics. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Science, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees and course <coughs> for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Will the recipients of master's degrees please be seated. President Washington, I'm pleased to call upon the Dean of the College of Education and Human Development, Dean Ingrid Guerrero Lopez.
Mr. President, I call now candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Education and Human Development. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Majors in Early Childhood Education for Diverse Learners. In Elementary Education. In Health Fitness and Recreation Resources. In Kinesiology. In Physical Education. In Recreation Management. In Tourism and Events Management. Mr. President, I have the honor to present the candidates for degrees in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Will the recipients of bachelor's degrees please be seated? I call now candidates for master's degrees in the College of Education and Human Development. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Programs in athletic training, in counseling, in counseling and development, in curriculum and instruction. Programs in education leadership, in educational psychology, in kinesiology, in learning design and technology, in special education, and in sport and recreation studies. Mr. President, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging, I welcome you into the company of scholars. Will the recipients of master's degrees please be seated? Congratulations to all. President Washington, I'm pleased to call upon the Dean of the School of Business, Dean Ajay Vince. Mr. President, I call candidates for bachelor's degree in the School of Business. As your major field is called, please rise and remain standing. Majors in accounting, in business, in finance, in information systems and operations management, in management, and in marketing. Mr. President, as the Dean of the School of Business, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in courses for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Congratulations, graduates. Please be seated. I will now call candidates for master's degrees in the School of Business. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Programs in accounting, in business administration, in finance, in management, in real estate development. Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Business, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Congratulations, graduates. Please be seated.
In November of this year, George Mason University announced the renaming of the College of Health and Human Services to become the College of Public Health. The George Mason University College of Public Health is the very first College of Public Health in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We now confer degrees from the last class of what now was the former College of Health and Human Services. President Washington, I'm pleased to bring forward the Dean of the College of Public Health and the former College of Health and Human Services, Dean Melissa Perry. Mr. President, I call now candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Health and Human Services. As your major field is called, please rise and remain standing. Majors in community health. In health administration. In health informatics. In nursing. In rehabilitation science. And in social work. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Public Health, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Will the recipients of bachelor's degrees please be seated? I call now candidates for master's degrees in the College of Health and Human Services. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Programs in health informatics, in health systems management, in nursing, in nutrition, in public health, and in social work. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Public Health, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees and course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Will the recipients of master's degrees please be seated? President Washington, I'm pleased to call upon the Dean of the College of Engineering and Computing, Dean Kenneth Ball. Mr. President, I call now candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Engineering and Computing. As your major field is called, please rise and remain standing. Majors in Applied Computer Science, in Applied Information Technology, and in Applied Science. In Bioengineering, in Civil Engineering, Civil and Infrastructure Engineering, in computer engineering, in computer science, in cybersecurity engineering, and in electrical engineering, in information technology, in mechanical engineering, in statistics, and in systems engineering. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Engineering and Computing, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees and course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging.
Will the recipients of bachelor's degrees please be seated. I call now candidates for master's degrees in the College of Engineering and Computing. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Programs in Applied Information Technology, in, in Bioengineering, in Biostatistics, in Civil and Infrastructure Engineering, in Computer Engineering, and in Computer Forensics. Programs in Computer Science, in Cybersecurity Engineering, in Data Analytics Engineering, in Digital Forensics, and in Electrical Engineering. Programs in Information Security and Assurance, in Information Systems, in Operations Research, in Software Engineering, in Statistical Science, in Systems Engineering, and in Telecommunications. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Engineering and Computing, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees and course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Will the recipients of master's degrees please be seated. President Washington, the Dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts, Rick Davis. Mr. President, I call now candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Visual and Performing Arts. As your major field is called, please rise and remain standing. Majors in Art and Visual Technology, in Computer Game Design, in Film and Video Studies, in Music, and in Theater. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Will the recipients of bachelor's degrees please be seated? I call now candidates for. I call now. Now I call. <laughs> candidates for master's degrees in the College of Visual and Performing Arts. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Programs in art education, in arts management, and in music. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees in course in which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Bravi, will the recipients of master's degrees please be seated. President Washington, the Dean of the Jimmy and Rosalind Carter School for Peace and Conflict Resolution, Dean Alpazlan Ozerdem. Mr. President, I call now candidates for bachelor's degrees in the Jimmy and Rosalind Carter School for Peace and Conflict Resolution, majors in conflict analysis and resolution. Please stand. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present candidates for the degree in course for which they stand. I confer on each of you 
that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Will the recipients of bachelor's degrees please be seated. Mr. President, I call now candidates for master's degrees in the Jimmy and Rosalind Carter School for Peace and Conflict Resolution. Will the candidates for master's degrees in conflict analysis and resolution please rise and remain standing. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Will the recipients of master's degrees please be seated? President Washington. The Dean of the Shar School of Policy and Government, Mark Rosell. Mr. President, I now call candidates for bachelor's degree in the Shar School of Policy and Government. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Majors in government and international politics and, and in public administration. Mr. President, as the Dean of the Shar School of Policy and Government, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees and course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Will the recipients of bachelor's degrees please be seated. Mr. President, I now call candidates for master's degrees in the Shar School of Policy and Government. As your major program is called, Please rise and remain standing. Program in biodefense, in international commerce and policy, in international security. Program in organization development and knowledge management, in political science, in public administration, in public policy, and in transportation policy operations and logistics. Mr. President, as the Dean of the Shar School of Policy and Government, I have the honor to present candidates for degrees and course for which they stand. I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Will the recipients of master's degrees please be seated. President Washington, the Associate Dean of the Antonin Scalia Law School, Sean Sutherell. Mr. President, I present candidates for the degrees in the Antonin Scalia Law School. As your major program is called, please rise and remain standing. Master of Laws. Juris Masters. Mr. President, I have the honor to present candidates for the degree in the course for which they stand. I confer the degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Will the recipients of the Master of Laws and Juris Masters please be seated. 
Mr. President, I have the honor to present candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor in the Antonin Scalia Law School. Will candidates for the Juris Doctor please rise and remain standing? I confer on each of you that degree for which you stand with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I welcome you into the company of scholars. Will the recipients of the Juris Master's degree please be seated? President Washington, this concludes the awarding of all degrees for the graduating class of December 2022. Congratulations to all. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Will all degree recipients please stand? now move your tassels to the conferred position from right to left. Congratulations! You are all now alumni of George Mason University. And as your first act of duty, please join me in the singing of our alma mater. Thank you, Rosemary. In closing, today each of you will depart George Mason University as an ambassador of this university. We are proud to know that Mason will accompany you now wherever you go because of how you grew here intellectually, socially, and in so many ways. Best of luck to you all and congratulations. Please remain in place until the platform party has recessed for a safe and orderly exit. Students should remain until a marshal dismisses their row. Thank you.